In this video, I'll cover the very simple but important process of how to properly set up and install your helmet-mounted dual-light flashlight onto a fire helmet. To begin with, there are three models of this light, the NSP4650B, which is our original model, and our two new intrinsically safe models, the XPP5466G and R. It doesn't matter which model you own, the installation is exactly the same for all three. These lights intentionally have tons of adjustment options. This level of adjustability allows you to have a completely customized setup on your specific helmet. That's something that no one else's light does. Please take note that if you're trying to move things around after you've installed this on your helmet, the light can come loose and may need to be retightened. Since no one wants to deal with that, this video will show you exactly how to set it up correctly the first time so you don't need to make adjustments while you're using it. In fact, the design is not intended to allow for adjustments while in use. So let's get it done correctly now. When you open the packaging, you'll notice that the helmet-mounted dual-light flashlight comes with the light, the upper and lower mount already assembled, two CR123 batteries, two sets of Allen set screws, two long ones and two short ones, the Allen wrench, and the instruction manual. My first suggestion is to remove the factory installed Allen set screws and set them aside for the first part of this installation. It's important to note that the light can be mounted on the left or right side of any full brim helmet. It can be mounted on an upswept or downswept brim and you can pick a multitude of locations around the side of the helmet for installation. That way, you can customize the installation to accommodate any special gear you might have, like goggles, face shields, SCBAs, etc. Once you've decided on the side of the helmet, let's place it on the brim and find the best location. The important thing to note here is that as much as is possible, we want the upper mount to be fully seated onto the brim. Don't worry about which way the light is facing at this point. We'll get to that in a second. If need be, try operating face shields and anything else you might have to make sure that nothing is causing any interference. Once you decide on just the right spot, I like to mark that location temporarily with a piece of tape so I can find the exact same spot later when it's time to install the light. Now, let's address the alignment of the light. Clearly, we want the light to point in the natural direction of your eyes, basically straight ahead. To make changes to this angle, we'll need to first take off the upper mount assembly by fully loosening the cap head screw and separating the upper mount from the lower. Just remember to pay attention to how all of the hardware goes back on because we're going to be putting it back together in just a second. Now that we have the upper assembly out of the way, we can loosen the alignment cap head screw and make whatever alignment adjustments we need to make to the lower. By the way, if you want to mount the light on the left side of the helmet like I'm doing, you simply turn the lower mount around 180 degrees and that will position the upper mount in the right orientation. Once you're satisfied that you have the lower mount aligned properly, fully tighten the alignment cap head screw and then reinstall the upper mount. Now it's time to get the light on the helmet. As I mentioned a minute ago, there are two different sets of Allen set screws, long ones and short ones. In most cases, you can use the longer set, but the shorter set is there just in case they offer a better fit. With the screws started in each of the holes, place the light on the brim of the helmet until it's fully seated and then start tightening everything up. On an upswept brim, it can be a little harder to get the Allen wrench in there, but take your time and really make sure that these are as tight as is possible without damaging the brim of the helmet. One of the major benefits of the helmet-mounted dual-light flashlight is the over-the-shoulder floodlight's ability to light up everything in front of you, including the ground at your feet. Key to using this is having the tilt angle of the light set up so that the light is pretty much straight up and down. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Once we've got it set, I'll tighten down on this really well because we don't want this to come loose. Once you have everything set up and locked down, you should be good to go. However, this would be a great time to try on all of your gear and make sure one more time that the light isn't going to interfere with anything. Clearly, if you need to make adjustments, now is the time. Just remember that once you're done, tighten everything down really well. I know I've said it before, but it's worth mentioning again. This light is not designed to be adjusted while you're wearing it. 
So take the time to use this video to get it set up correctly from the beginning. By the way, if you wish to use a blue thread locker, you certainly can. That may actually help keep the screws a little more secure. But the important thing about using a thread locking compound is that you have to follow the manufacturer's instructions for letting it cure before use. In most cases, that's about 24 hours. If you choose not to use a blue thread locker, that's okay. It's optional. But in either case, it's always a good idea to check all the screws periodically to make sure they remain tight. If you have any tips or hints that you want to share or if you have any questions or need any additional assistance, please feel free to give us a call at 800-233-2155. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.